So, you've just built yourself your brand new gaming PC, or maybe you just installed Battlefield 6, and your system hits you with secure boot not enabled. Yeah, we have all been there. So today, I'm gonna show you how to safely update and set up your BIOS, how to enable secure boot for modern multiplayer games like Battlefield 6 and Valorant, and finally, how to tweak a few Windows settings in order to have your PC running smoothly. Quick disclaimer, everything here is just a demonstration and based on my own PC and motherboard. Proceed at your own risk and always double check your manual before changing any BIOS or Windows settings. Hey, I'm Mo, an engineer, content creator, and gamer. And on this channel, I cover a ton of different tech as well as clean setups and PC content, including building this beautiful rig right here. So if you learned something today and you wanna join me on my 10K subscriber journey, consider subscribing to the channel and if you want to copy anything in my setup or my entire PC build, I have my links down in the description as well. So let's dive right into this, starting with updating your BIOS. All right, so the BIOS is like your PC's brainstem. And much like a new game patch, updating it can fix bugs, add CPU support, and even improve stability and gaming performance. So to start this process, first boot into your BIOS by tapping the delete key on startup and check your current BIOS version. This is typically located in the top corner of your BIOS. For the next step, head to your motherboard's manufacturer's website. For me, I have the Gigabyte Aorus X870 Elite, so I'm gonna head to Gigabyte's website. And what you wanna do is find your exact model and revision. These are printed on the box or right on the board itself. Now, once you've found your board and you're on the page, head to the support section, and then from there, find the BIOS section. And over here, you're gonna find a list of all the BIOS updates available. And what you wanna do is check the latest one. And if this BIOS update mentions any vulnerability fixes or stability enhancements, then I tend to update it. All right, so now that you've got your update downloaded, you're gonna to want to grab a USB stick, just like this one here, which is 32 gigabytes or smaller. And you're gonna to wanna to format it to FAT32 format. And if you're not sure how to do that, just simply go into your file explorer and then right click on the specific drive and then hit format and then just ensure that it is in FAT32 and click on OK and just wait for that format to finish here and you're going to be all good to go because this specific format is what your motherboard's manufacturer recommends. Otherwise, your motherboard is just not going to recognize the language or the format that your drive is in. Now for the next step, go to your downloaded BIOS update file and extract that onto the USB stick that you've prepared. Now, once you've confirmed all that, plug the USB stick into the USB port in the back of your motherboard. And some of these ports will be actually labeled BIOS port. Now go ahead and reboot your PC and you can either press the end key on your keyboard to get into the Q flash menu, or you can get into it right in your BIOS as well. So now that you're in the flash menu, you can click on update BIOS here and it will take you to the file tab where you can see a file viewer. And over here, you can hopefully see the file you've downloaded. If you can't, you can use the auto detect feature and it will find it for you. Just ensure that the file you're selecting is the same one you downloaded earlier. Now go ahead with the update here by double clicking and then allowing it to reboot. Now this is important, so listen up. Do not interrupt this update, no matter what. It might restart a few times, it might look like it's stuck, and it might take a really long time, but it's very important not to touch anything or interrupt it, because interrupting a BIOS update is pretty much one of the fastest ways to break your board. So just make sure it just runs its whole way through, and then once it's all done, it will actually just reboot and give you the Windows sign-in screen like it always does, and then from there, you're good to go and you've safely updated your BIOS. All right, now that you've updated your BIOS, it's time to dive into the BIOS settings because if you've just built this PC and you don't have these turned on, it will actually give you a better performance. And if you had these turned on before the update, just know that an update resets everything. So watching this and making sure you do all of these settings will actually help your performance as well. All right, now inside the BIOS, the first option we're gonna look at is enabling Expo for AMD or XMP for Intel. Now enabling this profile makes your RAM actually run at its rated speed that you see on the box, because otherwise, if you don't enable this, it's basically in eco mode and it's running at a much lower speed. 
All right, so in my BIOS, it's gonna be labeled under Expo Profile here. So I'm just gonna select Expo Profile 1, which will allow me to use my RAM at its maximum 6,000 megatransfers per second. So now that you've enabled your Expo or XMP profile, check that the resizable bar or resize bar support is on. This lets your GPU and CPU talk more efficiently, sometimes giving you smoother gameplay for free. So now we'll do a quick save and reboot just to make sure that the PC boots safely and the settings that we've just changed didn't affect anything. All right, congratulations. So far with just a couple of settings, you've got some extra performance. Now the next step is making sure that our games actually launch. And for that, we're gonna enable secure boot. Now secure boot is pretty much non-negotiable if you wanna play modern multiplayer games like Battlefield 6 and Valorant because it requires it for its anti-cheat. Now the following settings are required for secure boot. The first thing to check is to go to Windows and then System Information, and then checking that the BIOS mode is in UEFI. The second thing to check is that your disk is in GPT partition. To do this, run command prompt in administrator mode, and then the first command to enter is disk part, and hit enter. And then the second command is list space disk, and then hit enter. And if you see a star under GPT here, then the disk is in the correct mode. Now the third thing to check is that the system is TPM enabled already. And to do this, you can hit Windows and R, and then enter tpm.msc. And if you see something like this, where it says that the TPM is enabled and ready for use, then the system is TPM enabled. If your settings look different than this, then do not proceed with enabling secure boot. You need to do a lot more research and find out if your system is compatible and how to get these things in order first. So to do this, head to the boot menu in advanced mode. And if you don't see a secure boot option right away, then you need to have the CSM support option disabled. Next, head into the secure boot menu and switch the secure boot mode to custom. You'll see the reset factory keys option unlocked here, but before we do that, toggle the secure boot from enabled to disabled and then back to enabled, and you'll see a request to reset keys. Now, go ahead and reset factory keys like you see me do here, and you'll notice up top, it now says system mode is user and secure boot is enabled and active, which is what you want. And boom, you are anti-cheat ready and you can just launch your favorite games and have a good time. So now that you have your games running, what about cooling? So we're gonna get into fan curves in the BIOS and how to get the best cooling out of your new PC. Now, when we're looking at fan curves, our goal is to balance performance and acoustics. So inside the BIOS, you're gonna open your smart fan menu, which is what I have it called here in my Gigabyte board, but this could have a different name in your board. And then if your fans are PWM fans, and you know that when you watch your fans, or maybe you can read these specs on your case manufacturer's website, you can select that mode under the fan mode because sometimes the automatic mode doesn't get that quite right. Now let's get into the curve itself. If you want your PC to be more quiet, keep the curve gentle at lower temperatures. So you're gonna want to have it set to be a little bit of a lower percentage as you are in the lower temperatures. Now, if you want aggressive cooling and you don't mind it having a little bit of noise, you can actually ramp up the low end of the curve to the point that is acceptable to you to start at, and then just have that ramp up pretty quickly to 100%. So this will give you pretty much the most aggressive but the best cooling performance at the cost of some noise. Now for me personally, I like a bit of a quieter experience, especially that I record with my PC on in the back. So I set my curve to be lower in the lower temperatures and just a little bit more gentle, and then have that ramp up gradually. So if I'm running something like a Cinebench benchmark where the system goes crazy, then you'll see my PC go into jet engine mode. Now, before we move into Windows settings, I've got a bonus tip for you here which is if you've got an X3D CPU just like I have, for example, like the 7800X3D or 9800X3D, then make sure the X3D turbo mode in the BIOS is set to off because when this is on, it actually disables multi-threading, which kills productivity benchmarks. So if your Cinebench score looks sad, then this is why. 
All right, now that your BIOS is hitting the gym, let's make sure that Windows is also pulling its weight. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at in Windows is your GPU drivers. Now, this is pretty much the main reason for a lot of GPU errors and really lower performance in games, especially if the driver is specifically designed for a game you're playing. So making sure this is up to date can solve a lot of problems. Now to do this, go directly to the NVIDIA or AMD website, depending on the GPU that you have. So I have NVIDIA here. So I'm gonna to go to the uh, NVIDIA website, search for my specific graphics card, and then I can download the latest drivers and install those. If this is all a little bit too intimidating, you can actually also install through the NVIDIA app, which will automatically show you the latest updates and show you if there are specific games affected by this. Either way, I recommend doing a clean install. So what this will do is actually remove the old drivers completely and then install the new drivers so you have the best performance possible without any fragmented information. So now your GPU is feeling good. Just think of it as detox for your GPU. Now the next step is to look at chipset drivers. They help your CPU, PCIe lanes, and USB controllers talk properly. Think of it like couples therapy for your components. And these updates are crucial for system stability and performance and can actually improve compatibility and resolve crashes. And in my case, when I updated mine, I got better temperatures and I got more FPS. So doing this update is highly recommended. So to get this done, head back to your motherboard's website that we visited earlier to get our BIOS updates and then head back to support, but this time head to the drivers section and grab the latest chipset drivers for your platform. Once this is downloaded, just simply go through the process of installing it either on the AMD app or through the file that you've downloaded. Now the next step is to go to the power plan options. To get to this, go to settings and then to power options. And then if you have an AMD X3D CPU like me, you're gonna want to set this to balanced. Now, this might seem a little bit counterintuitive in the beginning, because you might think to yourself, why am I not setting this to performance, which is the fastest thing there? But essentially for AMD CPUs, the balance profile is gonna allow it to work as intended, and it's gonna allow it to make decisions on the best course to direct a specific flow to. So for gaming, it's gonna take advantage of those X3D cores, and then for productivity, it's gonna call on all cores. So this is gonna give you the best performance and efficiency without adding any extra heat. Now for a bonus tip in Windows, you're gonna to want to check on the startup apps as well as game mode. So for the startup apps, open task manager and then go to startup apps and then disable anything that is unnecessary. So this will lift a lot of the burden in the beginning when your PC turns on. It doesn't have to boot up a bunch of apps that you're never gonna use. Essentially less clutter is gonna give you faster boot times. Then head to settings and then go to gaming and then make sure your game mode is on because it's gonna allow the PC to essentially focus on the game you're running and give it all of the resources it needs. And that's it. Your system now has the BIOS updated to the latest version. It has secure boot enabled for multiplayer games. It has your RAM and GPU optimized in BIOS and it has your windows clean, tuned and ready for the best performance in games. Now, if this video helped you out, Drop a like, it really helps the channel grow. And subscribe if you want more guides and PC content just like this one. And remember, if you want to support the channel, I have all the links to my setup as well as my PC down in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.